Packing and eventually moving to a new country is probably one of the most challenging changes that an individual can make. Trust me, I know the struggle. But lucky for you, you've clicked on this video so you'll be better prepared for the move into your new country than I certainly was because when I came to Germany, I for sure did not know half the stuff on today's list. Speaking about the list without giving too much away, the best way to describe it is that it will be a combination of both hard or physical skills and soft or non-physical skills. There's also one skill on today's list that I'm sure not many people realize how useful it can be. Watch this video to the end as some of the skills can not only save you time and money, but also help you in the long run to earn money. Let's get started. Why wasn't the title thing played yet? Subscribe. Huh? Remind them to subscribe. Ah, okay. Before we get started, hit the like button. Almost 80% of you watching my videos do not subscribe. So let's make a deal. Hit the sub button and by the end of this video, if you don't get value, you can leave a comment in the comment section and tell me how you think I can improve the quality of these videos. I'll wait. Okay, now let's get started. This skill applies only when you're moving to a new country that primarily speaks a language that you personally don't. Like for example, if you're moving to France, you should learn French. Or maybe if you're moving to Spain, you should learn Spanish. And in my case, since I chose to study in Germany, I should have learned German before coming. Having to learn a completely new language after moving to a new country is pretty difficult and it makes the process of settling into your new environment way more difficult. Don't assume just because you're moving to a big city you can get away with not learning the language because sometimes shit does happen. In this video, I spoke about some negative experience that I had due to not knowing the German language and here's a short snippet of it. Generally, life becomes so much harder if you don't know the language. Here's a good example that I experienced this past semester where not knowing the language basically put me at a disadvantage. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Here's what happened. I needed to print a school assignment on an A3 paper, but the print shop that I walked into on this particular day was being served by an old man, I would say probably past the age of 60. I walked up to him and asked him if he spoke English, but I asked him in German, so I was like, Sprechen Sie English? And he was like, nine, which means no. So b before we continue, a bit of context. The reason why I asked him if he knew English was basically so that I can explain to him exactly what I needed because this was a school assignment which had specific printing instructions and I didn't want to mess anything up with my poor German. Luckily, I had a friend with me in the shop who is more fluent and he explained what I needed and I was able to get service. Whenever you see people online saying that you can come to Germany without really knowing the language and learn later, my friend... <laughs> The fire that is waiting for you on this side, you have no idea. So my advice is, if you're planning to come to Germany, please learn the language at least to a B1 level. It will be of great help. After you're done watching this video, I highly advise that you go watch that video. I'll leave the link in the description down below. I'm sure you're wondering how being independent is a skill. But just hear me out for a moment. What I mean is, learn to do things for yourself. Do not wait or depend on anyone for anything. You need to learn the skill of being more proactive than reactive to situations because when you move to a new environment, especially to the West, no one will give a shit about you. 
Even those who you thought really care eventually will expect you to take charge of your own situation and will have less time for you in the long run. Lastly, you need to understand that I did not know is not an excuse. Like for example, in Germany, if you sign a one-year gym membership and you do not want to continue after the initial 12 months have passed, you need to inform the gym in writing three months in advance. Otherwise, you will be forced to pay for every month the contract is active, even if you don't go to the gym. Generally, being independent and proactive is a very important skill as it can prevent you from getting into some very awkward situations. One particular skill that I have been struggling with ever since I moved to this country is time management. Here, time waits for no man. This is particularly true if you're coming to study because you will have to juggle between studying full-time, working part-time, and doing other activities that an adult is expected to do such as cooking and cleaning, and still try to have a social life. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you, to meet, you should say no. <laughs> it's the way you say it, you should say no. <laughs> Boris, repeat that. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. Don't worry, Boris. I don't have any friends. <laughs> try to plan weeks, if not months in advance, so as to try as much as possible to avoid to do things last minute. You should know what you need to do, when you need to do it, and if you are proactive, you research in advance and you get to know how to do it. Here's a good example. So let's say you're in Germany on a visa, let's say a study visa, and you know it will expire in six months time. You need to do research and find out all the requirements for renewing your visa and make the application at least two to three months in advance to avoid the rush of trying to get a last minute emergency appointment at the immigration office. Once you're able to manage your time, managing your money becomes a little bit easier because you can identify in advance what amount of money you will need and when that money will be needed. Therefore, budgeting on a monthly basis becomes much simpler. But actually, before identify what you will spend your money on, you will need to identify how you will be making that money in the first place. Depending on your skill level, you need to identify the kinds of jobs that you are qualified to do and how much you could earn and adjust your monthly budget accordingly to live within your means. Speaking about living within your means, I am currently working on a video where I talk about how much an international student living in Munich spends in a month. So if you're interested in that video, leave a like on this video, subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you are updated when I post that video. Now we're slowly transitioning into the hard skills and probably one of the most important skills you will need to learn is cooking. You need to be aware that when moving abroad, particularly to a more developed nation, the price of food will generally be double or even triple what you're used to paying for back home. Like for example, a carton of 18 eggs in my home nation would cost about 1 euro 80. But here in Germany, the cheapest carton at Aldi, for example, costs 3 euro 29 almost double the price. Even though buying food and cooking may seem expensive and time consuming, trust me, it is more economical than eating at a restaurant or ordering takeaway. Just the other day, the German government removed the tax breaks on restaurants that were put in place due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously these extra charges are going to be pushed onto the consumers. Therefore, the cost of eating out is going to rise even more. So for example, let's say you're craving a burger. These are the ingredients you will need and it will cost you this much. But remember, this is the cost for four burgers. 
On the other hand, the lowest price you can get for a burger at a restaurant is about 10 euro. From that example, hopefully you can see that cooking is an essential skill that can save you money in the long run. Whether you're male or female, grooming is essential simply because you don't want to look homeless as you go to work or school. But if you're coming to a more developed country, the cost of grooming sometimes honestly feels like a scam. Like for example, in Munich, the cost of just a plain haircut is 15 euro. As someone who shaves on a weekly basis, 60 euro a month to cut my hair is absolute madness. Now here's the worst part. If you're female who has, let's say, African hair and wants to braid, 60 euro is the average amount you would expect to spend as labor cost per appointment at a salon. Mind you, you still have to buy the braids. Let's also not forget that it is pretty difficult to find people who know how to properly braid African hair in the West in the first place. So while you're back home, learn to shave or to braid your own hair so that by the time you travel, maintaining your hair will not be a burden to you. And also, once you've mastered this skill of grooming, when you travel here, you can be grooming other people's hair as a side hustle to make a few extra euros or dollars. Riding a bike is a skill that is so underrated because so many people overlook it and it has so many benefits in day-to-day -day living. One of the biggest advantages of moving to a more developed nation is that you have improved infrastructure. And if you're lucky enough to move to Europe, there is a real focus on sustainable mobility, particularly in big cities. Meaning infrastructure such as separate cycling lanes are easily available on most streets to encourage people to leave their cars at home and pick up their bicycle instead. Therefore, if you know how to ride a bike, you stand to benefit in two ways. One, you save money by not having to pay for a bus or a train ticket for some trips because you choose to cycle. And two, you can earn money either part-time or full-time working as a delivery rider. So yeah, learn to ride a bike. Piggybacking off of the previous skill of being independent and learning how to do things for yourself, we have our next skill. I don't really know what to call it, but I will refer to it as handyman or repair skills. Sometimes in life, shit happens and something breaks or stops working like it should. And the last thing you want to do is to call someone or to go somewhere to get minor problems fixed. Because in developed nations, labor ain't cheap. Like for example, the other day I was watching a video by another content creator from I think Canada and he was saying that his PC had become slow and when he took it for repair he was told that it would cost $100 to do a diagnostics check. As in, it would cost $100 to find out what the problem is and he would still have to pay more to fix the issue. So he basically went on YouTube, searched his problems bought a few tools from Amazon and was able to fix it under $50. The point that I'm trying to make using this example is that you need to be ready and motivated to learn to fix stuff so that next time you need to make minor fixes, you try to do it yourself first because a lot of the times these problems usually require simple fixes. There's a famous quote that says, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. So it's really important to learn how the people in the country that you're moving to communicate. That way you don't end up accidentally seeming rude or offending others. Like in Germany, the language you use to address friends or people that you know is not the same as the one used when talking to your elders or your seniors or people you're not familiar with. Like for example, if you want to use the phrase, um, let's say, can you help me please? In German, there are two ways you could say it. You could say, können Sie mir bitte helfen? 
or kannst du mir bitte helfen? One is considered formal and respectful and the other one is considered informal and casual and it is very important to know when to use which one. How you communicate with others can really determine whether or not you will successfully live in your new country. So give yourself the best chance and do research on the major do's and don'ts when communicating in your new country before traveling. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section. And until next time, bye bye!